Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are standing here in front of our tiger exhibit! And look at this! The tigers love their new expansion to their exhibit. This is fantastic! And don't worry, I am not actually uh, like standing in front of an empty area. Believe it or not, there are glass panes installed. Watch Tate, watch. If I try to if, uh, uh, walk into the tiger exhibit, I'm just going to hit a wall. Boink. Boink. Bunk. There we go. So yeah, not going to be able to go inside. I'm still working on finding the perfect glass texture to replace the glass panes so that we'll be able to see through it all of the awesome animals inside without uh, like also making it look like that there's nothing there because there's something there. There's something right there, uh, and it just doesn't look like that. So I, I just, I'm very good at cleaning windows, Tate. I am very, very good at cleaning windows, and don't let anyone tell you any different, my boy. Oh gosh, he's so cute. Let's go ahead and feed him a fish, just because he's adorable. And my pockets are full of ferns and shrubs that I probably need to do something about. Oh, and there's some nice tea over here. Too bad I haven't worked up an appetite yet, or else I would use it. Uh, let's see, and it's the middle of the day. So, ah, all right, we finished a project. We actually finished a project and I am really proud and really happy. I really like how this looks too. And it looks like the tigers are very much enjoying their expansion. So let me walk over here. I probably need to put a sign right here. Well, actually nobody can tell this is an entrance. <gasps> Huzzah, clever use of uh, hidden doorways there, Siri. But I think the tigers are adjusting to this area very well. They've actually roamed through it a lot faster than I thought they would. Like I just turned around and all of a sudden they had wiggled through this tunnel. Um, I'm sort of tempted to, oh, and look at the pigeon. The pigeon wiggled through the tunnel to come to the other side and is now sitting on the heated rock. That is adorable. Oh my gosh, that's actually really cute. So as long as you're careful, buddy, I think you should be all right. You should be nice. Oh, he just flew into my head. What? <laughs> I know my hair can get messy, but I don't think it looks like a bird's nest, you silly goose. Uh, all right, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with everything that we have got set up. And what are these panes then? Because these are more the color and the texture that I really want. I might have to I might have to poke these when I have some free space in my inventory and see what did I use on this? I don't remember. I don't remember. But I'm very happy because it does seem that our tigers are adjusting pretty quickly to having an expanded area. Let me go ahead and put in some nice little plants. Uh, we could even tuck more mahogany leaves in. Give me just a second so that they've got plenty to enjoy. Those little ferns need to grow. The boxwoods need to grow. Uh, we have some big ferns over here that I could probably grow in the back uh, if I have a little bit of bone meal. We have oak leaves. I have more mahogany leaves if we need them. Whoops, a daisy. All right, where's my shears? But I'm pretty happy because this was kind of like a spur of the moment thing that we sort of did uh, also when we were doing our live streams together, my friends, so that we could kind of enjoy expanding the tiger exhibit together. And so it's really fun to see how it has finally come to completion and it has got me completely excited about working on the rest of the zoo. Uh, let me see, do I have any bone meal really quickly? that I can toss. I do not toss on top of those ferns. We'll come back to do that at some point then. Uh, but let's see, all right. I am pretty happy with this and actually feeling like I wanna kind of zigzag between working on the Oology Research Center and it's Egg Museum. <gasps> Just think about it. All of the different eggs that we could look into and I even heard rumors of platypi in the far future. <clears throat> But I'm really excited to just continue working on our projects in the silly way that we usually do. So with that in mind, Tate, uh, today I was kind of thinking about working on pads. And that sounds kind of boring. That sounds kind of boring at first, Tate. But you have to kind of carve a path into new areas if you want to discover what's waiting for you. See, I can come up with really profound sounding things on a whim. Don't you, don't you doubt it, Tate. Uh, but to do that, I do need a shovel. So, come on, buddy. Let's go over and drop all of this into the, the zookeeper station. And there's just always so much to do in the zoo. As soon as I finish one project, we kind of have to rush and just move on to the next project, which is just the nature of the beast, the nature of this uh, gigantic zoo area that we have made. I'm going to yank down anything I think I might use for this area. 
Um, and then do I have, I, I've kind of sworn I had a section where I was starting to keep like all of my construction goods, but let's just go ahead and start page two will be construction goods and maybe page three. Oh yeah, page three is apparently construction goods. Page two, I'm gonna make plants. There we go. Plenty of room to store things. That's fantastic. Um, and I really want to just kind of work on paths because I'm curious about what happened to all of those peafowl that we actually released into the jungle. We released a whole bunch of pigeons. We hatched a whole bunch of peafowl. And I'm wondering, have any of them grown up? into the rare albino peafowl? Do we have golden ingots being laid in our jungles? Is there hidden jungle treasure just waiting for us to be like out there finding it? Who knows date, but we need to go and investigate. And uh, while we're there, I figured we might as well put down some paths because it would be a good idea. Um, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this torch over, or this um, chest over here. But I figured if we're gonna dive into the jungle anyway, it might be a good idea to go and like put down a bunch of dirt paths so that we can just start figuring out where we're going to be like exploring. Okay, what kind of dirt am I using? The cobblestone dirt. All right, uh, reinforced cobblestone, which looks quite lovely if you ask me, makes a wonderfully clear path so people know where they are supposed to be wandering in my zoo. And then I left my, my shovel like a goose back in my dishwasher upstairs. So let's just go ahead and I guess get the most we can out of a cobblestone shovel. Oh, cobblestone dust. What the heck can you even do with that? I don't even know. I'm gonna have to figure it out. Uh, but let's just see how far we can go with a couple stone shovels. And that might be kind of like our limit for the day. We'll be like, oh, well, that's that's as far as we're, we're gonna be making paths today, Tate. But all right. And I actually did need to come in and, oh, Although we have a breeding pair, usually tigers are solitary animals who prefer being alone. Thank you, Educator William. Also, it appears you have laid an egg. Congratulations. I have to say, this is not what I expected from you, but I'm really happy for you. Um, I, I think this is an awesome egg. Uh, let me go ahead and see what kind it is. Uh, let's see. It's a pigeon egg. Congratulations, Educator William. Let's see if you're gonna have a little baby pigeon, which really, okay. We were just talking about how nobody talks about pigeons and those kinds of animals uh, last time, like a couple days ago. And um, <clears throat> I have to say, guys, have you ever seen a baby pigeon? No offense, pigeon, but have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Baby pigeons are definitely some of the more unique baby birds that I have ever seen. To be completely honest, they are called squabs, if I remember correctly. And oh my goodness, they look like tiny little dinosaurs. Um, I'm always an advocate for baby birds looking kind of like little alien flesh nuggets. Uh, that is something I have always said for a very long time, having helped you raise many a baby bird. But pigeons really, they come off as super interesting as babies to me maybe because of their weird little beaks but yeah baby pigeons they definitely look very very unique so if you ever need a good laugh I definitely suggest looking up more baby pigeons and they're actually really fascinating because pigeons take almost twice as long as other birds to grow up and leave the nest and I'm not really sure why that is I remember reading it like there was a really cool reason behind that but oh gosh baby baby pigeons are pretty cool pigeons are pretty cool we've been talking a lot about a lot of animals that most people would probably probably see as being kind of boring, but we tend to see as being uh, really exciting. Honestly, I, I'm a big advocate that if you, the more you learn about something and the more like sustained attention and time you give to something, you might find yourself oddly fascinated by it and you might actually really learn something special. Um, like, goodness gracious, that... So you should really like try to focus on something that you find kind of boring. Like do a little research on it. We live in the age of information. A couple clicks of the button and you can like look up definitions of words. You can look up a life history of a stranger. It's really fascinating. Basically, the rule of thumb I would advocate for is to always stay curious, my friends. But all right, so what are we doing today? I'm mostly going to be working on putting down these paths, I think, um, and also moving this film filter. It no longer needs to stay here so that it can kind of collect up all of the little trash pieces that are popping up. So let's pick up my little gather filter. There we go. 
Hopefully I got everything. Wonderful, wonderful. And then we're going to go ahead and put down this dirt. And now we have a path leading up to where people can come over and admire our tigers. And I am noticing now that night has fallen, it's a little bit dark over here. So I might look for one of our shiny logs that we can put down right there. But also, I wanted to put a path up at the top where people can admire our tigers from above. So let's wiggle up this way. Dun 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Also, I fixed the teleporter. Its tail still moves, but I'm just going to pretend it's kind of like one of those. Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> one of those really interesting statues. Hang on a second. Um, that might have a moving part just to kind of trick people a little bit. But it is now properly the color that you would expect to see a stone teleporter that you can come up to. And if you interact with the teleporter, let me get all this cobblestone out of my way so that I have a little bit of room in my pockets. But if you interact with the teleporter, you can actually jump to anywhere else in Zudesia, which is very helpful. And lately, that's been working a lot better. Also, that is a cursed grave. What is happening here? Tad was killed by magic. Had lived 108 days. Uh, this is... Yeah! 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 Tate, get him! Tate! Oh, mom doesn't have anything to fight with. Oh, now I've got, I've literally, I've got arrows in my legs. What kind of nonsense was that, Tad? I was trying to remove your grave so I could put it in a more respectable location and just turn into a skeleton. Oh my goodness. Well, at least I have the, the bone meal that I need for my project now. Ah, thank you, Tate. Gosh, that's really a lesson in needing to make sure that I add tons of light all over the world again. Speaking of which, Moonworm Queen, if you don't mind, I can't believe I'm covered in, <laughs> absolutely covered in arrows now. Uh, that's okay. Let's see. Just a couple, one to the, the back of the leg, one to the back of the arm. I'm sure I will be fine. This is not something to panic about, certainly. And Moonworm Queen can help us because now it is night. And one day we will have the Night of the Moonworm Queen. And pretty soon we may actually have to go back to Twilight Forest Tate so that we can gather up all of the resources that she's going to need to be nice and strong and healthy and provide us with many, many more babies. <laughs> I think you can feed her glowberries and it actually helps. Look at that. Oh, I love that. That is just so fun. Oh, look, and there's a pea fowl. Oh, this is so awesome. I love having all of the animals just roaming around to bring our world to life. Uh, all right, oh, you know what, Moon Moon Queen? While we're here, and now I can hear the pea fowl. He's got a lot to say about this too. But while we're here, let's go ahead and take care of a few of these things. Nice. It's just so cool. Look at how, how awesome she is. Her children just go out to light up the world. This is fantastic! Even spots that I cannot even reach or see from where I am at, her kids are like, I've got this. And they just fly away. They start lighting up the sides of trees. This is just awesome. Oh my gosh, Moonworm Queen. All hail the Moonworm Queen! All hail the Moonworm Queen! You're amazing! And we've got a pigeon sitting on top of that mushroom over there. I love having... There's a female peafowl! I love having more life in our forest. This is fantastic! Uh, let's see. I'm even going to have the Moonworm Queen, if she doesn't mind. A baby right there. Nice up in the top of our banana trees. Hopefully preventing running into any spooky monsters at some point. Which really shouldn't be in my zoo in the first place. I have no idea why they just started showing up after I lost the Sword of Light. But I suppose that's a story for another day. Alright, let's wiggle this way. Oh, hello, Pigeon! You know, I really feel like this Pigeon likes the tiger exhibit for some reason. Not sure why. I'm not really one to judge a pigeon's lifestyle choices. Oh, hello, tigers. There, we definitely need to put that down. But look at this. Now we're building a proper path around the top of our tiger exhibit. Oh, this is so exciting. Next thing you know, we'll start putting down all sorts of decor pieces. We might even have some of our educators added back in. Oh, we'll be able to start adding guests in in the future. It's going to be a real zoo eventually. I say five years later. Literally five years later. <laughs> Alright, Moon Moon Queen, if you don't mind, thank you. And people better be okay with bugs if they come to my zoo. The Moon Moon Queen, like, her, her children, she and her children definitely perform a very important and vital function for us. Alright, we'll put down the path here. And I actually think I'm going to end the path right here with a bunch of ferns so that you have to turn around and go the other way. Not every path needs to be a looping one. So let's see. We have an emerald philodendron. 
I just want a whole bunch of ferns. Tad is now going to be recycled into helping us make tall ferns. I can't believe that. A creepy, spooky skeleton just popping up under my feet like that. How rude. Uh, all right, put these down. Wonderful. Nice, beautiful fern backdrop so that it's nice and leafy, which is my favorite way to make things. In fact, let's we can even kind of push in here. And what we can do is we can let the grass grow. There we go. And we can make a beautiful little garden kind of tucked to the side. So as you're walking up to the tiger exhibit, you can glance to the side and it's going to be just a nice, beautiful garden. We'll put a couple really tall ferns in the back. We'll put down the philodendron in just a second. We might put in one of the glowing little, one of the glowing little mushroom blocks that we have. Uh, let's add this in. There we go. Oops, sorry, fern. There you go. And we can put down, there's some bone meal there. Need more bone meal. I've been running low on bone meal lately, Tate, because we've been doing so many plant related things. And I kind of wanted to come up and spruce up the area under this tree. This is a really cool multi-species tree that has actually been here for as long as we have. <laughs> like as long as we have been poking around this side of the zoo, this multi-species tree has been here. So I would really love to kind of give it a little bit more room. Let me come over here around it so that if it wants to grow more of its fruit, it can maybe. Uh, whoops. Okay. We need to put that piece back. There we go. But that's another thing that's just kind of been like a point that could use a little bit more attention, a little bit more TLC that I'm glad to have just taken care of. Hey, come here, come here little dirt block. There we go. All right, and some potato seeds. Tate, what do you think? See, this thing is so interesting because it has two nutmegs, it has a pear, and over here it's got some walnuts that all grow on the same tree. Tate, you just knocked down, that's so cute. Good job, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this pear. And you don't really see that on many things, so it's like it's naturally just sort of like grafted itself together. So I've been wanting to give it a little bit more room. So if it wants to just like, I don't know, grow more fruit, it can. I don't have any oak wood so that it can maybe expand its trunk. You can't really do that with real trees. That would be kind of cool though, wouldn't it? If you could just like expand how big a tree was by, by digging under it and just like adding more trunk. Oh my goodness, just imagine how beautiful we could make our world if we could dramatically control the size of trees. All right, so let's see. I need a little bit of oak wood for that tree. And I don't have any, do I? Oh, there we go. One piece of oak wood. That's all I need. All right, and I said at the start of this before I got distracted by baby pigeons, squabs in other words, that we were going to go and search and see if any of those peafowl we hatched are actually going to grow up into- A catfish drowned! No! I don't know why that happens. It's so sad that it does, but oh good, I have some eggshell at least. Um, But yeah, poor catfish. Poor catfish. Rest in peace, little guy. Oh dear. Oh man, all these little touches, Tay. Just being able to spruce up our zoo. Oh, it feels so good. All right, let's wiggle over here. I'm gonna remove this dirt piece and then put an oak wood right under it. In fact, I should probably add another oak wood right here. So, hmm. Hmm. Here, I'm gonna put dirt down there until I get more oak wood. But there we go, okay. So let's go ahead and let's go searching for all of those peafowl and see if any of them grew up into the really hard to get our hands on albino peafowl, Tate. And let me go ahead and feed you some raw fish. There you go, my boy. All right, so we're gonna wiggle this way. I saw one peafowl right here. Uh, so he's up here and I guess we can just kind of tidy up our world as we go, can't we? Hello, buddy. How are you doing? You are not an albino peafowl. You are right up here though, and this is very interesting, but I'm kind of tempted to like clean up that gravel. I don't know. It's really hard to decide what to leave as a naturalistic, glorious section of our zoo, like that distant waterfall of lava. Probably unsafe, but very beautiful. So I'm tempted just to leave it and tell our guest, don't swim in lava. It's just practical, practical things that you should, you should take 
safety measures to care for whilst you are in our zoo. But all right, let's search out the calls of the peafowl. A female peafowl! Hello, my dear. It appears that you have left- Oh, another female peafowl. Apparently, they are leaving behind these eggs. Since they are wild eggs, I shall go ahead and try to hatch them right away. Let's see. A lot of signs of things- Electric ants! I forgot about those guys. <laughs> A lot of signs of things that I wanted to build exhibits for that I have not yet done. It looks like most of our peafowl grew up into female peafowl. This is so interesting. Because here's another one of our female peafowl. And then if we come over here, I saw another one. There's a male peafowl right over there. This is so fun. This is like bird watching because you don't know what they grew up into. So now you can come over. Another female. Oh, and I see the tail of a male down there. Oh, that's awesome. This is so cool. Okay, hang on. Let's come over here. Yeah, this guy has a glorious normal peafowl tail. Here is a female peafowl. There is a snake. Good to see in the jungle. Healthy ecosystem thriving, apparently. Um, and it doesn't look like we got any of the white peafowl, unfortunately. However, I spy with my little eye some delicious mushrooms! So I'm going to go ahead and gather up these mushroom gardens, except for one of them, so they can keep growing. There we go. And maybe I can make a little meal out of the wild mushroom garden. And then there's even a lot of these. I'm just going to grab these gourd gardens. Again, I kind of think they're fun to make into little gardens that are kind of- Oh no! Quicksand! Ugh. I'm gonna have to cover the, all of this stuff up. No, Tate! Stay out of it! Tate, come! Not when I have puppies with me, though. They, without fail, tend to drown in those. Hello? I thought I heard something over here. Jeez, I can't believe this is in my own backyard. And- Oh, there's a deer. And I've hardly explored it. Oh, look! And we've come up to the lava! It has some very daredevil-y cows right next to it. Gosh, this is so nice. I really need to make a path over here to you. And the thing about the paths is even though they sound kind of ridiculous, I think that was a bat noise? What? It is a bat noise. Oh my goodness. Is it coming from the side of this? Hang on here. Are we like on top of some sort of cavern again? I always find that to be an extremely exciting place to be. Oh my gosh! We were! Wow, Moon Moon Queen, with your help, please. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, there's fish! There's fish in this hidden pond! In my own backyard! Oh my gosh! This is so cool! Let's open this up a little bit and then we can actually make it so people can come in. And just like get a quick glimpse of this little wild cave. This is so cool. Here, I'm gonna pull these back a little bit. Um, I, I need a normal shovel. Oh wait, I have a normal shovel. There, I've been trying to use these. There we go. This is so fun. Yeah, and I can hear a bat. I wonder if a bat, look at that. There's just a wild little fish. Okay, hang in there, buddy. I'm just gonna expand this a little bit so I can see. I still hear the bat. And I think I hear a slime. And we have this cute little cave that we can kind of like invite people to come and just take a peek at. Oh, that's awesome. I need to connect this up to the main paths. And then that way it'll really start inspiring me to really try to hoof it and come over here again. But this is so fun. I love exploring our world and seeing all sorts of just uh, like this beautiful lake that now has peafowl, wild peafowl just wandering around it. And a bunny, a bunny just hopping along. Gosh, and there, I clearly did something over here. I must have started clearing a pathway. Yeah, look, I must have started clearing a pathway. So maybe it would be a good idea to kind of focus on expanding that for a little bit. Because once we do that, I can look around and think, you know what would be good right there? Electric ants. I don't even remember what context I was going to do research with electric ants. But, hmm. But alright guys, so we are continuing to expand the zoo in a way that only I can do. Kind of ambling and rambling from one place to another. If I seem a little distracted, I apologize. I am desperately trying to get tons and tons of work done before Chips and I leave for our wonderful vacation for the month of May. We are going to go and visit with both of our families. It's going to be very special. We haven't seen them for a long time on both sides. Uh, and it's just really great because poor Chips has been so busy with his schoolwork that we haven't really had a lot of time to spend together. So I am so excited. 
<laughs> and I have so much work to do. So if I if I seem a little bit a little bit ditzier than normal, that's why. I'm I'm tickled because I get to spend time with the love of my life. <laughs> but I will update you guys on that, and I think we'll do some exploring around our area. And I think what we may do is make a path or two. And after we do that, kind of figuring out where we're going, maybe putting a sign up about like different kinds of poison mushrooms. I'm, I wonder how many species of toxic and poison mushrooms there are in the world, actually. Like what environment cultivates them the most? Is it going to be like jungle environments? Oh, that's so interesting. I want to start putting up informational signs about everything, even if we don't have an exhibit on it. And then once we put down a few more paths, I really feel like we can go back into the OLG Research Center and I might, my dear red pandas, I see you down there, and I might be able, oh, there's one of them over there too. But I might be able to really start looking at some of the eggs that we have never hatched, like the cranes and some of those other birds. And we might be able to start figuring out places we could put them or even Tate possibly going looking for ocelots and other animals to sprinkle in the world. So slowly but surely we're gearing back up for the zoo. And I'm so excited to share the adventure with all of you. And I will see you next time. Bye bye guys.